every day at ACSI. For over 37 years, ACSI has been a pioneer in providing complex electrified door hardware solutions for contract hardware distributors, wholesale lock distributors, and major manufacturers in our industry. We take great pride in the strong relationships that we've built over the years. We have always believed and promoted that we are building partnerships instead of just building a customer list. I think the cornerstone for these relationships is our great team at ACSI. The experience, knowledge, and passion our employees bring to their jobs every day provides our customers with a level of service that has been a hallmark of ACSI. Our philosophy of providing the highest quality products, on-time delivery, and competitive pricing every time allows our customers to lock into the ACSI Advantage. So the ACSI Advantage, um, some of the things that I learned um, while recently going through these, uh, these guys catalog is the fact that everything that they're doing is American made, they're fully customizable, and they can make anything, not only with their own products, but with another manufacturer's products uh, and fully customize that product um, beyond your belief. So whenever I say that, um, let's say you have an exit device uh, from a Von du from a, you know from Von Duprin, and you need that that exit device to have the uh, request to exit, latch bolt monitoring, and a motorized latch retraction. With the old Von Duprin exit device, you could have all three of those things, but now, Von Duprin doesn't offer all of those things um, because they don't have enough room inside their um, their push pad or their chassis to be able to allow for every one of those um, those options. So if you send that product to ACSI, they can modify your product to allow um, for that to take place. And I think that's really cool. And it's not only with exit devices. They do it with hinges. They do it with um, power supplies. They do it with uh, cylindrical and mortise locks, um, and they also have their own their own types of locking systems that we'll go over later on in this program that I think is really unique. Um, there might be a place for it, there might not be, but take a look at it. I'll tell you what it is and what it does, and if you can find a place for it, uh, these are the only guys that make it. So the agenda today, uh, we're going to go over hinges, doors, uh, the door controls. Uh, the hinges are going to include their pivots. They're going to include uh, butt hinges, and these butt hinges are going to be from various manufacturers. Um, I'm going to show you different op options that they can do and uh, that sort of thing. Door controls, uh, we're going to go over key switches, uh, other types of sw switches, push buttons. Uh, we're going to go over uh, door position switches. We're going to go over indicators, which is going to be status indicators of openings. And then we're going to go over power supplies. Um, Dual gang, single gang, um, the different options of power supplies. And then we're going to look at uh, exit devices, both uh, motorized latch retraction, uh, case switches, which are going to be your request to exit, um, your latch bolt monitor, and that sort of thing, um, electrified trim, um, and then solenoid latch retraction. Um, and also, I think, uh, solenoid dogging as well. Uh, we're going to look at uh, their electrified locks, both in mortise and cylindrical. Mag locks, uh, they, these guys offer both uh, the standard mag, the dual mag for pairs of doors, uh, the mini mag, and also shear locks. Um, and then we're going to go into some of their unique products. Uh, we're going to talk about communicating bath bathroom locks, which I didn't understand what they were really trying to do with this product at first, but after going over it a little bit more, um, I now understand what they are uh, trying to relay with their bath locking system. And we'll go over every bit of that. Um, and then we'll talk about their Gemini locking system. The Gemini locking system is going to be just for stairwells. It kind of works like an electrified strike by, by the way that it is um, manufactured. But it really is a um, a fail safe mortise lock without having to run wire through the electrified hinges. And I'm going to go through this little portion, and then just like every time that we talk, um, I'm going to switch it off to myself, and then um, show you guys a little bit of product. I don't have very many samples today. 
which is unfortunate because I know that we like the show and tell, but I do have a um, sample of the hinges, the mortise lock, and also the motorized um, latch retraction. So let's look at the electrified hinges first. Um, what we have here on their electrified hinge piece is these things are UL listed. They're listed in both fire rated, uh, I mean, fire rated in both stainless steel and steel. They have a full line from four, four and a half or four by four up to six by six inches. So four by four, four and a half by four and a half, five by four and a half, five by five, um, up to six inches. Most of their products are in stock for their uh, electrified hinges. They do also have um, various options that they use, which will be um, custom wire links, universal connectors, um, and then they also have manufacturer spe specific connectors um, in Hager, Osalvoy, and Legion, which is Ives. The uh, available manufacturers that they stock are Hager, which is the BB1279, the Ives, um, what is that, the BB5 or F, whatever it is, the BB5, I believe, the McKinney TA2714, the TA or the T4A3786, um, the Stanley FBB179, um, PBB's BB5, Bombers, you're going to have to forgive me. I forget what theirs is uh, called, but I think it's like the FBB um, something or another. But then they also have Rickson, ABH, Donjo, and Dorma. So the bottom line to all this is if you have a project where you are looking at uh, Hager's BB1279 or Ives, um, BB, BB5 or FBB5 or McKinney's TA2714, and you don't want to pay that, uh, added expense for that manufacturer's um, electrified hinge, or let's say you don't want to wait four to six weeks for their hinge, you could go to ACSI and get not a look-alike. You can get that product. Hager, Ives, McKinney, Stanley, PVB, Bomber, Rickson, whatever specified, you can get that manufacturer's hinge and you can get it shipped out that day. Um, one cool thing about ACSI is these guys are not only uh, stocking another manufacturer's hinges, they're also wiring it for them. So ACSI has been around for like 75 years and they have uh, built their business around working with other manufacturers and electrifying their products. Um, and I think that that gives these guys a real advantage because not only do they know what is already out there in the market, but they can also uh, wire up your hinge um, to match that manufacturer specification every single time. Um, these things are automated, so they're done with via robot, and it gives a real advantage to ACSI because it's going to be exact every single time. They also do pivots, both the non-load bearing pivot, which is going to be your top and your intermediate pivot. And they also will electrify the bottom pivot as well. So very unique, very different. Um, hey, Justin. Yes, sir. Hey, so if I have a job that has, say, 3,000 Ives hinges um, or thereabout, and I order the electrified Ives hinge through you at ACSI, Am I going to get that cheaper from ACSI or is it more expensive than if I buy it from Ives? The very one of the very strange things with ACSI is um, because they are a manufacturer and they buy in such a large quantity and they're electrifying their product, you're actually going to get this product for a lot less than you would from your buying program. So there are jobs that you're going to get extremely deep discounts and things like that. But Comparing it on an everyday, day-to-day -day basis, uh, buying your hinges um, from the manufacturer or from ACSI, ACSI is going to beat them every single time. And so not only does ACSI have other manufacturer's hinges, but they also have their very own hinge that they can match to other manufacturer's specifications, so even cheaper. So if you don't have to have it labeled, and uh, that sort of thing, you can buy it from ACSI, get it wired, 
and get it on your job site. Um, something else that's really cool about ACSI hinges, they offer a uh, latch monitor or, uh, excuse me, a door position switch at the hinge. So instead of having to run extra wire at the, um, the top of the door frame for a door position switch, you can do it right at the hinge. Um, and you can see that at the uh, bottom right where it's a little bit bigger of a uh, prep. That's actually a door position switch there. It's magnet based. Um, so you can do all in one with your wiring for your um, electrified lock set and your wiring for your door position switch right at one spot, which I think is a great benefit. So um, let's take a look at what these things look like. This right here is a BB or FBB 179 from Stanley. Um, and it's a standard five um, bearing or ball bearing hinge. It is prepped with brass um, ferrules, just like any other uh, electrified hinge will be. They come in 18, 22, um, 26, 28 gauge wiring. They do four wire, six wire, eight wire, um, all the way up to 12 wire, I believe. And this um, connector here, the wiring is fully customizable. So right now you can get standard is 12 inches and you can get it customizable all the way up to whatever you want. Um, because these guys make these in America in-house um, and you just saw what they did, they can do anything that you want. And this is just a product sample, but I'll show you. Let's say, say I had a 36 inch door, which is gonna be a 33 inch uh, wire run. They provide a 30 or 40 inch uh, wire for, to go through. That will accommodate the door up to three foot four. Then, I mean, you can order this for a door up to four foot, five foot, six foot, whatever you need to accommodate your space, they can do. Um, so I think that this is really cool. Um, so on the back here, just like I showed you in this photo here, you can get a door position switch mounted right here and it will mount on both sides. So whenever the door is closed, in the closed position, it will read as green um, or as closed. And whenever it opens, it will say, hey, the door is open. And it works just like a standard door position switch. But where you have a standard door position switch at the head of the um, of the door frame, this will be right there at the um, at the door hinge. And there's no way to um, make that fail. So uh, this is what this looks like. So it's a really quick video. I hope that you saw what I was um, trying to uh, show you there, where they take the, the hinge, they have it set up on a um, on a machine. And it's, it's set up exactly the same every single time for an Ives hinge. Um, it goes through the next process where it is machined out. And then the next process is running that wire through. Um, so it's really cool. It's every time it's consistent. Um, and it's made the day that you order it. So the next thing that we'll go over and look at, and I don't have a sample of these, but it's going to be door controls. The uh, 1300 series door controls from ACSI, it, this portion, I mean, these are very standard. You'll find these all throughout the industry from Securetron, which I think is now called something different, um, to Allegion, uh, I think uh, that's Schlage Electronics, to RCI, um, and that sort of thing. But let's take a look at what ACSI has. ACS size door controls, they're the same thing. They're UL listed. Um, their contacts are normally open, they're normally closed. Their key switches are key resettable. So 
the uh, double pull at the key switch um, is just like any alarm switch that you would find at an exit device where you have to actually take a key and physically reset it um, for the alarm to go off. And you'll see that at the bottom left here where you have a key switch with an indicator and an alarm. Um, that alarm is going to go off if the key switch turns red and it will stay going off until it is um, physically reset. Here's something that's a little bit different than competitors. These are rated for indoor out and outdoor use. So um, that's a little bit different than the competition. They're not NEMA 4 rated, which I, I don't think they're NEMA 4 rated, um, but they are um, weatherized. So you can use them indoors and you can use them outdoors. They mount in a single gang box. So costs and things like that are lower because you're not going to have to build a special box um, to mount these in. And the key switches are packed um, with two spare keys um, in case you uh, lose one. So let's take a look at these key switches. From the bottom left, you have your deluxe version where you have a key switch with an indicator and a siren. And then moving over left to right, you have a standard key switch. And what are these used for key switches? Um, key switches are primarily used um, to activate and deactivate uh, systems in hospitals and in schools and in retail spaces and things like that. So then looking um, further to the right, you have a um, just a push button switch. This can be used at um, areas where you want to allow someone in an interlock. You want to allow someone access into a school. Um, you want to allow someone access um, in a secure space. And the green will indicate, yes, they're good to go. And the red indicates, no, they are not good to go. And then you have the lesser deluxe version of the key switch that you saw before. Um, and that's the key switch with the indicator of green and red. So if you turn the um, cylinder to the left, you're going to get um, your green. Yes, you're active. Or if you turn it clockwise, excuse me, you're going to get green. It's active. And if the uh, system is tripped, it'll turn red. And you'll have to go one revolution uh, counterclockwise, reset it, and then reactivate. So if you have an alarm where you have delayed egress um, outside in a stairwell leading to the exterior, or if you have it in a mental institution or retirement um, home in the uh, memory care, this right here will allow you to know if someone has left the building, the uh, delay egress will go off and you'll have to go back and reset it before um, it reactivates. Hey, Justin, question. Yes, sir. Uh, is the key switch with siren available in US 10 finish? And if you don't, uh, maybe have to check. But. I'll have to check on that. I believe they're only available. I believe with ACSI, they're only available in stainless steel. Um, but I'll check on that and I'll get back to you. But I'm I'm next to positive that you only have one finish with these with with their switches. Moving more to the right, you have um, emergency releases, emergency release handles, and um, you know these are going to be used in uh, interlocks and also um, for breakaway spaces and things like that where you need to pull to release. You're going to use these and and things that are not related to door frame and door and frame hardware but um, they do make the emergency pull release. And then at the top right, um, that is a door position switch. It's a security door position switch. So unlike your just your standard magnet that has a three quarter inch prep that's um, round, this one is gonna be mortised into the frame and mortised into the door and provides a little bit more security. And lastly, they um, also do digital keypads. Um, the digital keypads from them are actually uh, IEI digital keypads, and they're very standard. They're very basic um, keypads, but they do offer them. Power supplies. This is a huge list of their power supplies and what they can do. And, and I really don't think that um, we need to go over every single one of them, but with ACSI, 
uh, what we will mention is their power supplies are fully customizable to whatever you have in your system. There you will listed the standard um, 1500 or the excuse me, the 1400 series is um, at a two amp load capacity, which what does that mean? Um, so if you have exit devices or say more of the slots that um, that you're tying to your system or even electric strikes, you have to take the load from the electric strike or the electric lock um, or the electric exit device. And you have to calculate based on the wire run and the load that you're bringing in, uh, how much how much amperage you're using. So on a standard mortise lock, um, I think you're at 250 milliamps, um, which means that it's one quarter of one amp. So the standard 1400 power supply can handle two locks or two strikes, the wire run, and um, I think two push buttons or um, two different types of sensors. So you can install your door position switch on two openings. You can install your credential uh, or your reader, whatever you're using, um, at two openings, and you can install an electrified lock set at two openings, and you'll be fine with their, just their base model. Now, with that base model, if you wanted to add options to it, they turn into different product numbers. So you can add um, schedules, so day and night mode. Um, you can um, add adjustable time relays or time delays um, and different models. You can add battery backups. Um, you can add just about anything. Um, you can even add an automatic door operator interface uh, to, the, to the power supply. So depending on what your system is, um, please take a look at your product catalog prior to just ordering a standard 1400 because you're going to want different cards um, or you're going to want uh, your battery backup and all of those are going to be different product numbers. So going down the list on the left here, just like, just like uh, most of your power supplies are out there, they do provide voltage and short circuit protection. Uh, they have two outputs controlled by one input or independent outputs for an auto operator. Um, so that's what we were talking about earlier whenever you have an electrified lock set um, and readers, and then you want to have, if you want to have an auto operator. So if you had, say, an electrified strike at a restroom and you wanted to put an auto operator on it, um, you can definitely do that. You'll just need to put you just need to order the 1420, which is the, which is a little, I think it's midway down. Um, and that will allow you to have your automatic operator interface. And it'll also allow you to install the push button and an electric strike. So that way, if you're in a restroom that you want um, to have touchless, let's say you um, wanted to put um, some sort of push button on the outside or a handicap button on the outside, and you want it to be able to um, have a lockable uh, restroom, but unlockable um, during hours of operation. A person goes up, they push the button. It um, tells the power supply, yes, they're okay to go through. Uh, the power supply will then release the electric strike. It will also initiate independently the automatic operator, allowing the door to open and um, a person with access accessibility issues to go through that opening. Um, if that person, say, wanted to lock it up, um, they can definitely do that. And you could even buy another um, device that um, is a last bolt indicator with a, an indicator on the outside saying that the room is either occupied or unoccupied. But uh, we're, not, we're not here to go into different interfaces and things like that. We're just talking about the basics of these supplies, and um, the bottom line is they can do nearly everything that you need them to do. So I would compare their power supplies to other manufacturers that do it for everyone, such as um, Altronics and um, people like that or Command Access. So let's look at exit devices. Their exit devices or the exit device piece is really cool. They can um, provide MLR or motorized latch retraction, ELR, which is solenoid latch retraction, 
electrified dogging, um, electrified trim, and they can provide uh, monitoring switches or um, you know, request to exit switches, um, push pad monitoring switches, things like that. So the 1550 MD, which is their uh, motorized dogging, and their E1550, which is their electrified dogging, uh, to look at those would be looking at the top right, the MD1550 is the very top right. That's your motorized latch retraction. And the E1550 is the top left, um, or at the top right, if you look on the left, um, you see that long bar and then a big round solenoid. That's your uh, solenoid latch retraction. These guys um, can retro with a number of different manufacturers out there. They can go with Von Duprin's 99, Corbin Russwin's ED6000, Sargent's 8800 series, Precision's 2100, Design Hardware, Yale's, uh, they can go with Yale's, they can also do um, Hager. So they can go with a ton of different um, manufacturers out there and electrify their devices. So something I needed to mention earlier, but I, haven't, I hadn't mentioned, let's say you wanted to um, buy the electrified portion outright. So if you wanted to buy the motorized kit outright and you wanted to put it in yourself, you could buy that um, kit and it would work out really good. So if you bought this kit and you brought it into your facility and you motored and you put the uh, electrification on a standard exit device yourself, very easy to work with, um, very easy to do. You just remove the cylinder dogging from the kit or from the exit device. You put this in its place. There's instructions and videos online to do it. And um, you then electrified your kit. But say you wanted to have nothing to do with that at all. You could take your, your device, send it to ACSI, and they'll do it for you, which I think is a great value um, coming from a place, you know, from a distributor, knowing that, um, you know, electrifying hardware is very expensive. You could do it from ACSI for a fraction of the cost. Even if you took your X device in and sent it to them, you could do it at a fraction of the cost than you would um, buying it direct from the manufacturer, which I think is a great value. So Kiki had a good question. Um, he's wondering about the warranty. If, if we were to take a manufacturer's exit device, remove um, their components and put in ACSI's components, would it meet the same warranty? Um, I believe as far as a mechanical warranty, yes, it does. As far as an electrified warranty, um, ACSI warrants their product and your other manufacturer um, is going to warranty their mechanical portion. So you aren't modifying the uh, critical areas of the product. So you're not going to modify the chassis and you're not modifying the push pad. You're going to modify the places where you add components to. So just like if you bought a motorized latch retraction kit from a Legion, Dormacava, Sargent, or excuse me, Asa Avoid, or Dorex, if you bought one of their kits um, that, that are going to cost you, you know, eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars, you could buy one from ACSI for a lot less than that and um, use the same holes that they would be using for their kits and modify. Uh, or add to the exit device and add the electrification. So you're not changing the um, the function of the device other than adding the electrification. So I think that that um, is a great benefit for anyone that's um, needing electrification. So some of the other components that you're going to see here are at the bottom left hand. That's a case switch. This is going to um, allow request to exit or push button or push pad monitoring. In the middle at the bottom, that's for a, an electrified exit device, um, excuse me, an electrified 
mortise exit device. So if you have a mortise exit device that you need um, to have latch retraction on, um, these guys can do that, or they can electronically unlock and lock um, that device as well. And then at the bottom right, you have electrified trim. So electrified trim is only solenoid driven, and um, you either can lock or unlock the device. So you just like um, just like it says um, in the in the features here, you can change your trim or even your lock to fail safe or spell secure. So automatically locking, automatically unlocking um, your trim or your lock set. And so for one thing that needs to be noted is at the bottom middle, if you have an electrified exit device that's mortise, a mortise exit device, they only have it available in Von Duper and 7500. So they don't have that available um, in Asa Avlo's products or in Dormacabas products. But here's another thing, another little hidden gem for these guys. If you have something that no one else has ever done before, if you have an, uh, say you have an, that electrified exit device um, that's a mortise exit device, and you want um, ACSI to electrify it for you, yours is just a standard mortise exit, you can send that off to them. They can look at the product customize it and electrify it for you um, and send it back to you. Um, so they always want you to call in first, but they're open to uh, electrifying any product that you have. They just need to see it first and they'll tell you if they can or cannot do it. This is the <clears throat> motorized latch retraction. This right here um, will go for a, I believe this is for Von Duprin's 99 series and as you can see it has a hook here and what it does just like von duprin's motorized latch retraction is um, it, it hooks on to their standard uh, mechanical um, push pad at the um, yeah, i wish i had an exit device to explain this to you but it has a a carriage that it rides on and as you push the push pad down um, you know the carriage moves backwards like so the push pad goes down and it pulls the pullman latch or the um, rim exit device latch back so that way it allows it to operate this does the exact same thing but just in a different position so it grabs on and it pulls that carriage back or the motor spins and it pulls this back and what it does is it allows that um, push pad to go down and um, retract that latch um, all of your functionality is right here. It's all on a cute little board, and this is a quiet latch retraction. So um, I think usually you'll hear in um, Asa Oblo's product, and I used to be a, a huge supporter of most of um, Asa Oblo's products. The 8800, probably one of my favorite exit, exit devices of all time. Um, but one of the problems with their exit device, whenever you put your credential to the device, and you tell the power supply to tell the um, the device to retract the latch. What do you hear whenever that happens? You hear that just like that, you know, and it will pull the pad down. And once it's done, you hear it, it goes back. And that loud noise, if you're in a library or if you're in an auditorium or if you're in a music hall um, or something along those lines, sometimes could be distracting and um, don't want to be heard with a you know something like this uh, manufacturers came out with quiet latch retraction um, and what that does is it allows it to pull that device back without making that huge noise and one of the biggest problems with a legion in the past was that big clunk, clunk noise that you would hear whenever you would push the device in and uh, the latch would engage into the um, into the strike you would hear that really loud noise this prevents that from happening um, by allowing it to be quiet. So take a look at it here. Very small, compact, and things like that. Here's how it installs. Two screws. That's it. And it goes into existing holes that are in the device already. So you're not going to be refabbing the exit device or anything. You're going to be using existing holes. Um, they prep this for use with those existing openings and things like that. And um, it's very simple and it's easy to install.
but this is what it take, this sort of looks like. It's it's six inches long. It's um, really easy to use and it's really easy to install. So in, in the aftermarket sense, if you have folks that are needing some sort of security or access control at their opening, um, you can provide something like this and um, give them the ability to have that that latch retraction um, and the start of an electrified system without having to um, buy a new device, change out holes, and go through a big old long uh, to do just to um, to accomplish that goal. So I think you would find for locksmiths and um, um, installers and people like that, this could be a great benefit. Um, I wanted to show you also, here is the motor, the actual drive right here. You see this? This right here screws in and out um, as you're using the device, whether you're engaging or you're disengaging the device. So very cool, very cool. easy. Um, let's move on to the lock sets. Electrified locks, and I also have an electrified lock set, so maybe I should have just left it on me uh, and showed you guys this. But something that um, I think that you'll find very interesting before just moving on to anything else, um, I think that it must be noted. Look at the very top photo. How many people have seen one of these? I would think that not very many people in our industry anymore even know what that is. What that is, is a unit lock. Corbin and Russell made their name um, for a long time off of selling the UNI unit lock. And it went through school after school after school. And in Colorado, where I live, um, this was very big, very popular. Um, and all schools had these unit locks. They were very easy to use. They were easy to um, to install, and they were easy to replace uh, whenever they they failed. But most of them didn't fail. Corbin Russell made a killing making these unit locks. Well, Corbin Russell no longer makes that unit lock. And as some of the guests that I have on this program today know, that when finding pieces for these unit locks. Um, for some of the small schools that are still using them, it's impossible. Um, you go through, you, you'll go to auctions just to find pieces and parts for these unit locks. You'll go to old distributors that still have them in stock just to find parts for these unit locks. And ACSI, they have them on the shelf. Not only do they have unit locks on the shelf, but they can, they can electrify unit locks and make a unit lock part of your access control system. So now you can use um, you know, a very old technology, a unit lock, and put it into um, new age terms and electrify that product and, and have it used today. So electrify lock sets, they're all UL listed. They come in fail safe or fail secure. <clears throat> they have a simple uh, selectable fail safe or fail secure on the device, um, so you can choose whether you want it to be either fail safe or fail secure, and it's um, very easy. Key override, so what does that mean? Uh, key override, basically if you have a lock set that's engaged and it's locked down um, electronically, and you wanna be able to get into that room, but you don't have, say you lost your reader, uh, you can take your key and you can manually override or pull back the latch um, to act, gain access to that room. But one thing that you have to note, if the room is ele electronically unlocked or say if it's in fail safe mode, you can't go through and um, lock that device down. So if you're in fail safe mode, you can't go in and lock the door down and think that you're gonna put it in fail secure mode. You have to actually physically put it in fail secure mode. Uh, so that way the device is locked. So you can unlock an electronically locked device or a fail secure device, but you cannot do the opposite. And that goes for any manufacturer that's out there. You can add a monitor switch to both the um, lever, which is your um, your access, your request access, excuse me, your, and latch bolt monitor, or you can add um, the request exit switch at the lever. 
So you can have a latch bolt monitor, which is at the latch itself, or you can have a request to exit, which is at the lever. You can have, um, you know, some opt op some other optional things on both the cylindrical lock or the mortise lock, which is a um, key retraction monitor. So if somebody does physically go in, put their key into the device, and gain access mechanically, you can put a monitor switch there that will send a signal to your access control system saying, hey, somebody gained access via their key instead of using their reader, and they can monitor that, you know, that that happened. You can't see who did the um, gaining of access, but you can narrow it down because whoever you issued a key to um, are going to be your prime suspects. You can even do deadbolt monitoring. Deadbolt monitoring is only going to be um, available for devices that are mortise. Like you can't add a deadbolt to a cylindrical lock. So keep that in mind. So yeah, I added these photos here of the M1500M and also the cylindrical lock because I wanted you guys to see how easy it was to change it from fail safe to fail secure. So if you take a look at the um, um, the electronics package here on the cylindrical lock, you can see that to change it from fail safe to fail secure, you just flip a switch. And um, once you flip that switch, you change the device from fail safe to fail secure or from fail secure to fail safe. And on the mortise lock, so if it's on the, if it's on the uh, cylindrical lock, you're going to have to take the device apart and things like that. With a mortise lock, mortise locks are a little bit easier. At a mortise lock, you take the face plate off the edge of the door and you can um, see that change and you can make that change right there at the um, at the face of that mortise lock without having to disassemble the uh, device itself. So if you guys want, let's take a look at a mortise lock. This right here is a um, electrified mortise lock. This specifically is going to be a, it looks like a Schlage uh, mortise lock. And this has authorized egress switches um, added to it. And I'll show you what all those things mean. So if we take a look right here, you see a small little case switch, just like you saw on the exit devices. And that little, that little thing has an arm off of it. And They've modified their switch to match up to Schlage's uh, mortise lock. And what happens is whenever you turn the lever here, the lever moves this little switch back. And once it does, um, that single pole moves and um, it tells somebody something's wrong. You know, the, the, the lever has moved um, and the door is now um, opened or the levers open. This one also has the fail safe and fail secure switch right here. And um, here's the the flip switch right here. By flipping this switch, you change it from either fail safe or fail secure. Here's the side profile of it. And here's what where it all takes place. It's all solenoid driven. If the solenoid is projected out, it's unlocked. You're allowed access. Once it pulls back in, it locks this down. And basically all it's doing is it's changing the auxiliary latch, which this is called an auxiliary latch right here. This is the portion of the uh, lock set that goes in whenever your door closes, right? And um, this is only for a mortise lock. It goes in, puts this in locked mode. You see that? Whenever it comes out, and that's basically all that it's doing whenever it's electrified. So again, I'll show you again. Whenever the auxiliary switch is in, right, the lock is dead locked. It's locked. It won't move anywhere. That's what that solenoid is doing electronically. It basically, on the inside, is pushing this piece in locking the door down and allowing not or not allowing you to open or close. Um, something really cool about mortise locks is this right here, this portion right here is split in the middle. So 
this side or this lever has one control, the opposite side has another control. And if you guys don't know what that means or what that um, what that is there for, if you have this in and you're locked down on the inside of the room, which all mortise locks are handed on the inside of the room, you're allowed free egress from the inside. So they split it down the middle to allow each one of these to have uh, independent uh, mobility. So whenever this is depressed and there's an emergency, somebody will be able to go into the on the inside or somebody that's already on the inside, turns the lever, pulls back the latch. On the outside, however, if it's in, it's in. And the only way to get that thing to turn is right here. And that's with the with a cylinder. You see that? See how that works? This is what a um, electrified mortise lock looks like. Um, it's also going to be very similar to the Gemini. And we'll talk about that here in just a little while. But does anybody have any questions? Oh, very good question, Kiki. So the question is, how warm does it get? Um, and Kiki has a great question there because something that you'll find in a lot of um, solenoid driven devices, especially solenoid driven devices that are either exit devices that are held back or electrified latch retraction that are held back during the day, allowing free egress both from the inside and the outside, or um, electrified lock sets that are pulled back to allow free egress. Um, what you would find in the past is if you go up to that push pad and you touch that device, it would get smoking hot at the door or at the frame or even at the push pad itself. It would be really hot. And sometimes it would get so hot that you could, couldn't even touch it. Um, ACSI, theirs, um, they use some sort of cool, um, cool solenoid. And um, by cool, I mean their solenoids stay cool because they're, they're using low energy output to achieve the same process that other manufacturers are using, the solenoid doesn't get hot. I think we explained that last week as well um, with RCI's electric strikes. Their solenoid is low output, um, and whenever it's low output, the, the solenoid tends to stay cool and doesn't heat up. So I hope that answers your question there, Kiki. Oh, I don't have a sample of this, but Let's talk about mag locks. The 3700 series electromagnetic locks, um, they come, you know, with the very same features that every other one of their X5 products come, come in. They're UL listed. Um, these guys have a variety of models. As you can see, I've listed uh, most of their models from the standard um, 3700 series magnetic lock. The um, 37, what is this? The 3720 at the bottom left, which is for two doors. The 3760, which is at the top right, it's your mini mag or your low load. Um, this is a 300 pound uh, force magnetic lock. Um, oh, excuse me, the bottom right is your 3760, and then your top right is the 3795 and that's the shear lock um, so you have your standard duty or your your standard um, electromagnet uh, or your mag lock and that's going to be 1200 pounds i think some of the other manufacturer standards um, are 800 pounds that which they go up to 1200 pounds um, with different models they just do the 1200 to 1200 pounds they're not going to do the 800 pound and things like that. Um, they have the 3770, which is your mini mag. And this could be ordered in the 300 pound, or you can get it a little bit bigger in the 600 pound. Um, but those are both mini mags and won't work the same as a, a standard mag. Um, the shear lock is a concealed magnetic lock. A lot of people um, don't really know what a shear lock is or what it does. But basically a shear lock, um, 
installs into the frame at the head of the frame and the other portion of it installs at the top of the door. And whenever the door is closed, the magnets engage and it uh, provides magnetic field and holds that door closed until it's released later on. Um, you don't get the same type of force with a shear lock, but they do do the job. Um, so if you are in high security or something along those lines, you definitely want to go with a face mounted uh, mag lock and not a shear lock, but there are situations where a shear lock does, does the job. There are some different um, options that you can um, add to these. You can add um, LEDs. You can add uh, brackets for glass doors. You can add the magnetic bond sensor, which basically, if you look at the top left, at the very bottom of the uh, magnet, you'll see a black um, sliver from that stainless steel. And what that is, and you also see it on the um, bottom right photo where you see that, that black portion, that's a door position switch. And what it is, is basically, if you have that mag lock and somebody does happen to uh, break that hold and open that door, that bond sensor is gonna send a relay back to your access control system. And it's gonna say, hey, the door is now open, that bond has been broken and something's wrong. That's just like a door position switch. So if you're looking to remove um, wiring, I, you know, I'm never gonna say to remove the door position switch at the top because it's a $20 item and um, it does have a great use. But if you're wanting to remove the wiring, which the wiring is what where you're gonna have that big expense, um, then this is something that you can do to, to remove them. Communicating bathrooms. I was so confused on how this was um, designed to work, but it's very simple, it's very easy, and um, I'll explain it really quickly here for you guys today. So I was under the impression by looking at this, that this was gonna be um, for an interlock. So to whenever somebody entered into a secure area, this would prevent um, them going any further without having access, uh, a man trap, if you will. But that's not what this is designed for. This is designed um, to be used as, um, you know, a bathroom interlock. So if you are in a dorm room or in a hospital or in some type of multifamily residence that has a Jack and Jill restroom or something along those lines that you're sharing with um, someone else, this little system here allows you to... Um, use that space and remove access from the from your neighbors so how it works is you have to have either you have to have an electrified lock set um, and the electrified lock set um, is what's key for the system to work so basically you go into your door um, and you push a button and that little black button as you can see it here it's an indicator switch um, and it's provided, this civil system is provided all together. You push the button. Once you push the button, it locks both doors down. And it uh, removes, it either removes power or adds power, depending on how you have it, if it's either fail safe or fail secure, and uh, allows you to use the restroom. And so while that's happening on the other side, if your neighbor's looking to go into the restroom, one, the door's locked, but two, it, a green light is flashing, showing that the opening is occupied. Um, this is a great benefit um, for, like I said, dorms, hospitals, or multi-family residences. But that's basically it. The Gemini locking hardware. This is a cool, cool little piece of hardware. This is designed for stairwells. And take a look at it. Um, it's something that I've never seen before, and I had to get it explained to me yesterday. Um, but what it is, is it's basically an, an electrified strike that they call an operator. And it is installed to be used with stairwell openings only, right? And uh, what you want to do is this little system here will allow you to take a door um, that is... Um, say classroom or office function, or it's able to be locked or unlocked on the outside of a stairwell. And this little uh, Gemini lock will allow free ingress or egress 
um, whenever it's inactivated. So, how does that work? Just like I was saying earlier, and I'm going to switch this off now. Um, I'm going to turn on my camera and I'm going to show you again the screen here. So, at this little space here, the solenoid drops down. And you see this right here, it pushes out and it makes this flush. It pushes in on this auxiliary um, latch and it locks this door down. So the basic use for it is it takes, and Jonathan, he, um, he so eloquently explained to me yesterday is it basically makes a, an opening, a um, electrified lock set or a fail safe or fail secure lock. What you do is just like this, that um, little operator comes down and it pushes this flush. Door then is locked down. It's locked down from the outside only, so you can't go up the stairs, but you can always go down the stairs. In the event of a fire, this releases. Now both sides are unlocked. So if you have a situation where you don't want to electrify your lock set, if you don't want to run wires um, through a transfer hinge or an EPT power transfer um, and run wire through your door and have an electrified lock set, if you want to just have that on one side, um, which is your um, strike side, this system could work for you um, and allow you the ability to have a fail safe lock set without have an electrified lock set. So you do have to, this all, you know, whenever you order this, you do have to order this all as a system, um, but you can take an arrow, a Corbin, a Schlage lock set and send it into them and they'll modify it to be able to accomplish what they're looking to do. And what they do is right here where the auxiliary latch is or Right here, where this black space is, where the auxiliary latches, they modify it to allow it to lock down, just like I, I've been showing you. And that is basically it. Um, and with that being said, I mean, that is the end of our program as well. Um, does anyone have any questions on it? So, in short, um, with ACSI, those guys um, are versatile. And by that, I mean they have the ability to customize anything that you have, um, whether it be something that you've never um, seen electrified before or something that you have seen electrified before. They're versatile in, in a way that they can look at those products and customize them or possibly customize them after a brief chat with them. You need to explain to them what you're looking to accomplish, but they usually can accomplish anything. Um, they have a wide variety of stock. A lot of their hinges, lock sets, exit device kits, um, um, trims and things like that are all ready to ship same day from order. Um, on their stock items, like I said, same day shipping on those items. Uh, they have unique products. We saw that with their bathroom interlocking system and also in their Gemini. Um, they're always looking to innovate and uh, change, you know, the pace of who they are, what they're trying to accomplish, and that sort of thing. So they are very unique, and they there is a place um, for their products. It just depends on um, what you're looking for and what you're trying to accomplish. So. That being said, that is all I have. I'm going to switch back to, um, but that's all I have, guys. I appreciate y'all coming in um, and spending a little bit more time with me than I really expected with a small deck like this. But, you know, ACSI is a company that has a lot to offer and they have a lot of products um, out there and they just need a place. So for aftermarket sales or, um, even contract sales where you need something fast, give these guys a shot. And I think that you'll see 
that um, not only are they going to make a difference for your project, they're going to make a difference for your wallet, and they're going to make a difference for your customer because they're going to provide material in a fast way. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. And uh, I really, really appreciate um, you joining me for this training. Thank you very much. And um, like, I, like I always say, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to our LinkedIn and hook up with us. Ask me questions. Engage me. Tell me what I can do different. Um, and if you need me, call me, email me. Do that anytime. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much.